I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be why rough times make relationships really hard for guys who are in relationships. I've got an email here from a viewer. He says, hey, Mr. Wayne, my name is James, and I'm currently in my last year of college. With the level of work that is expected of me in my final year, I wasn't planning on having any serious relationship for the duration of my last year. But things don't always go as planned. I started going on dates with a girl I was pretty attracted to from two years back. But I somehow never got to speak to her properly. He says, I don't like scoring girls from a 1 to 10, but for simplicity, I'll tell you this. She is a total 10. After just a few dates, my attraction really grew. And that tells me more than likely you're paying attention to the, your own level of attraction and not really paying attention too much attention to hers. In other words, you were not able to remain objective. And when you do that, that's when a guy typically starts acting dopey. He becomes compliant. He becomes submissive. He starts putting her needs above his own. Basically starts saying yes to everything that she wants. When she wants to change the plans, he says yes. When she wants him to do things that he really doesn't want to do, he says yes. And she can tell he's going along with things that he doesn't really want to because he's seeking her approval. And so this is actually approval-seeking behavior. And so when you're doing this, dating a woman, it's going to cause her to lose interest and lose attraction to you, towards you over time. He says, although I'm certainly not that guy that gets any girl, I don't consider myself completely useless when it comes to women as I have been in a relationship with several very beautiful women in the past and I've never been dumped. Well, the thing is, is that every guy, like on a scale of 0 to 100%, when you're to look at like everything you need to know in order to be successful in pickup, dating, and relationships when it comes to interacting with women, every guy knows some percentage. And so, give you an example. So, if you know like 70% of what you need to know with women, you'll be able to get laid, you'll be able to hook up, but you'll basically get women to the point which is what you see a lot of dudes in the seduction community is they're able to get a girl to go out on a few dates, seduce her a couple of times, but as far as transitioning into relationships or long-term relationships, those guys really struggle with that, that stuff. So, <clears throat> he says, Unfortunately, I was going through some rough times as I was seeing her, and the stress somehow made me forget my game, making me foolishly tell her how much I liked her after the first three or four dates. Yeah, you became dopey and you started projecting your high interest onto her and assuming that because you really like this girl a lot, that your liking her a lot was going to make her like you a lot in return. And instead, what happened was it caused you to act weak and submissive and like you weren't, didn't have your center. And so, in essence, you started chasing and pursuing because you felt needy. You basically felt that you didn't deserve her deep down and you figured it was just a matter of time before she found out what you were really like and blew you off. So that caused you to pursue and to try too hard and to do too much in the relationship, which obviously causes the attraction to go in the opposite direction. So as your attraction for her is going up, her attraction level for you is actually dropping and going in the opposite direction. So and that's the other thing. It's like when so for men, in order I, I'll give an example like after I got, I left my wife and I got divorced. I was in, I had, it was about a year, year and a half into my real estate company at that point, and I just, I remember feeling so free. The last thing in my mind was dating a woman. As a matter of fact, I didn't want anything to do with another chick. I wanted, I wanted to be single, and I swore I will never ever get into a relationship again. And I especially will never get married again unless I am with somebody who I am head over heels in love with and who I feel is the person that I want to spend the rest of my life with or that I want to be in an exclusive relationship with them. And I've got a quote that is a great quote to think about when you're single. This is so true for men and women. We, we, need, to th we need to think about this, the, the importance of this thought here. This is a quote by Oscar Wilde. He says, I think it's very healthy to spend time alone. You need to know how to be alone and not defined by another person. In that relationship, in that marriage that I have with my ex-wife, it basically it took me taking my feelings and my desires and my wants and kind of stuffing them down inside and ignoring them in order to stay in that particular relationship. 
In essence, I put on a mask in order to maintain the relationship. I bullshitted myself and I bullshitted my wife, obviously. And I bullshitted myself into believing that I was more into her than I really was. And, and that's why when I got divorced, I felt like I was free. I felt like I had kind of dodged a bullet because my, you know, those last few months we were together, my wife was off the pill. She was trying to get pregnant because she could tell that I, she didn't have my heart. And so she figured, hey, if I get this, if I get pregnant, then he'll, it'll refocus him on us and our relationship and our family. And I just knew deep down, I was like, I need to get the fuck out of here because all I'm going to end up doing is making the two of us miserable and just totally ruining the lives of our children. And so like those first six months, I was like, I didn't want anything to do with dating women. I wanted to focus on my career, my purpose in life. Like I remember I, I moved out of the house. I let my wife stay there. And all I took was my clothes. And so I was, I was staying a couple miles down the road. A buddy of mine, he had his house that he had just bought. And so it was pretty much empty. And so I stayed in one of the guest rooms. And I slept in this fucking four-inch foam mattress that was about that thick for a little over a year. He didn't, there was no dressers or furniture in there because all my furniture was at, at the house that I have with my ex-wife. And I figured eventually we'd sell the house and, or I'd move back in the house and then I'd have all my stuff. And So it was a temporary thing. And so I had all my clothes in piles on the floor because I, you know there was no dressers to put anything in. Obviously my hanging clothes I had hanging up in the closet. And that's, that's how I lived for a year. And I loved it. I didn't fucking care. I thought it was the greatest thing in the world because my business was starting to do well. It was starting to take off. I was excited about my future. I was excited to be free. And then it was about six, eight months I met this girl and I wrote about her in my book. Just fucking, this girl totally knocked my It was love at first sight. As soon as I saw her, I was like, I knew it was exactly the woman I wanted. And she had a boyfriend at the time. And I ran into her, I don't know, a couple of years later. I mean, I, I knew this girl because it was a place we used to go in, but she dated this guy long term. And so I dated the other chicks and hooked up with other chicks. But I really wanted to be with this one particular girl. But, hey, she had a boyfriend. There was nothing I could do. And so one time I ran into her and we got to talking and found out, hey, she was no longer with that guy. And so I went out. It was her first date and I wrote about that in my book. And it was, God, it was fucking, that, going on a date with that girl was the first time I'd been on a date in probably several years at that point, three or four years, I think, with a woman that knocked my socks off. Because the, the the last time that that had happened to me was actually before I had met my wife. And so it was probably like three or four years. Had Actually, no, it was probably closer to four to five years the last time I'd gone on a date and I felt that for a woman because then after it didn't work out with that girl, I ended up hooking up with my wife and I never felt that feeling. And I'll tell you what, dude, it was fucking worth the wait. It was worth all the pain, all the suffering, everything that I went through in order to get into that relationship. And so the thing was is that, you know, I've had periods of time in my life. It was like I've had periods of time when I was in real estate where like, you know, things were real difficult, they were real stressful, maybe in the early years, like when I started a new division of the company. When things weren't really stable financially and I wasn't really 100% sure that things were going to continue to go well, I didn't want to be in a relationship. And so Typically when a man is in very stable periods in his life where he's earning good money and his career is stable, he's, you know, he's got his, his, his house in order, his career is in order, he's got his finances in order, he's got a lot of great friends and family that he spends time with, he feels like he's, he, you create that space in essence for that person to show up in your life. But if things are unstable, like if you're just starting a new business, you're just starting a new career, you move to a new city, you're going to want to kind of get, get your, your roots down and get a little stable. And so like in, in my life, when things have been real stable, that's usually when I'm going to be in long-term relationships. When I'm moving around a lot or things aren't stable or I'm not like in one place, I may be going from city to city or I'm traveling a lot, I like to just hang out, hook up, and have fun and avoid being in relationships. And, and that's typical. So when your life is stable, you feel like being in a relationship because you feel comfortable. But when things are really shaky and you're unsure of your future, it makes it a thousand times harder, especially, you know, I have a lot of respect for guys that are in relationships or they're married and they've got several kids and they're trying to build a business on the side, they're trying to build their career on the side. It's not easy doing those things. And so if you're going through a really difficult time, my advice to you would be to focus more on having casual kind of relationships, hookups, those kind of things. But you never know. I mean, a right girl might come along and you're not looking for a relationship. Boom, you fall head over heels in love. And you're trying to avoid a relationship and and, that, and you end up getting into one just because that's the way 
life is. And so if you, like I said, if you want to avoid a relationship, then just date women on a casual basis and make sure you stick to your guns. Because if you go committing to being in a relationship when you don't really want that, all you're going to do is make her miserable and you miserable. And so back to this guy's email. So to make a long story short, he went through, through some rough times and apparently he finds out that she's in a relationship with another guy. And he says that she ba basically barely, or this other dude, ba her boyfriend barely makes the effort with her. And she was very close to ending this relationship with until he, I guess, started acting all needy and then she decided to stay with the boyfriend. So he says, fast forward to now and I feel that she sees me as a huge pussy. And he says in parentheses, I don't blame her. And then I've screwed up pretty fucking bad. He says, I'm not texting her, but I'm certain she will text me back soon and she does that. So my questions are, does this mean that she's still slightly interested? Yeah, if she's still pursuing you in some shape or form. Then yeah, it means that she definitely has some interest there. And so all you need to do is nothing because obviously you've turned this girl off. So when she reaches out to you, simple response like, hey, great to hear from you. I want to see you. When are you free to get together? And if she brings up the boyfriend, well, I'm so kind with the boyfriend. You just say, I don't care about him. He can keep you busy with when you're not with me. Besides, that relationship is between you and him. And obviously you call me because you're thinking about me. And I'm thinking about you too. And so let's hang out and have fun. And, you know, as far as you, if you want to talk about what's going on in your boyfriend, I'm happy to listen, but quite frankly, let's just focus on having a good time together and see where it goes. But the thing you got to keep in mind is this girl is willing to cheat on her boyfriend and deceive you a little bit by not telling you this. And so that that's a red flag to me. This girl is a casual hookup kind of girl. And you said so yourself. You've been going through a difficult time. So she's not relationship material, dude. You know, I'm so sorry to tell you that, but that's just that's the way it is. She's a great girl to hang out, have fun, and hook up with. Friends with benefits, open relationship, but she's not girlfriend or wife material because she acts from a place of low integrity. She's with another guy, but she's trying to hook up with another dude on the side, obviously, until you screwed it up. So hang out, have fun, hook up with her, but don't get into a relationship with this girl. So if you have a question you want to ask me, go to my website, click the Contact Me tab, which will be in the left-hand side of your screen. Send me one to two paragraphs max and just give me several weeks to get back to you with a response. If you want to talk to me right away, the quickest way to get my help is to book a paid phone coaching session. You can do that by going to my website, click the Products tab, which will be at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions. If you want to get a digital version of my Kindle ebook, on my website, underneath the email sign-up box, is a box that has a link that will take you right to the Amazon Kindle download page for my book. Once you get there, if you don't have a Kindle device, just download one of their free e-reader apps for whatever electronic device you want to read my book on. And if you appreciate the value of the information I offer in these video newsletters, the articles on my website, or my e-book, you can show your appreciation right now by going to my website. And on the Wibia toolbar at the bottom of your screen, click the PayPal donate button and donate any amount that you feel is equal to the value of the information. And I will talk to you soon.